and I think the girl, the girl boss, the boss babe terminology, like, just needs to only be a joke from now on. Um, hello everybody, and welcome to episode ten of My, My Lash, Lash Two Brain, Brain cells. cells. I am your host, Maddie Morris, and I am also your host, Elliot Morris, co-host. <laughs> vice host well <laughs> secondary host yeah um okay but to shout out elliot look at his cool crocs <gasps> guys are crocs coming back because elliot got these for christmas Thank you. and we both think they're really cool shoe game shoe game, shoe game. <laughs> shoe who game. you know doing it like this <laughs> who you know dressing if you're like listening me? on audio these shoes are fire <laughs> <laughs> Just know my Crocs are fire. If, if you are on audio, just know my Crocs are fire. Guys, today we have a juicy episho- ep- episode for you. Episode. So sit down, get your tweezers out, get your clients to get sh- your- oh, oh, yeah. Are we? Yeah, that's all right. We're- this is a good episode. Welcome to I've Lash had this- ASMR. I've had this one brewing in my brain for years now. Years? Yes. This specific episode? This specific episode. Wow. Um. First of all, everyone wants to know, is Liquid Death sponsoring us? And the answer is no, because they don't know who we are. But they could be if they knew who we are. So if you are seeing this, bully Liquid Death until they sponsor us, because we not only drink their water every episode, but... We sell it at the coffee shop. We sell it at the coffee shop, and people think that we Um, just like sell liquor all day, but we don't. It's Liquid Death. They wish we sold liquor, but we say, no, it's even better. It's water. It's water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. This episode is going to be juicy. It's going to be piping hot. Um, take notes if you would like to. Get your notepads out. Um, I think I'm going to title this like the anti-boss babe narrative. Or the, anti-bo- the anti-girl boss episode. The anti-girl boss episode. Yeah. Because there's a reason. Okay, so I have been... First of all, I've been a girl boss my whole life. I've people been a- people heard that and they started sharpening their pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, They're what like, What did she say? Wait a minute. I'm a girl boss. Wait a sec. I'm a board certified boss babe. I am. I just girl bossified my entire life. <laughs> are, are you saying that I made a mistake? <laughs> and it's so funny because like I've been a girl boss since the womb, baby. Oh. But um, I, I, <laughs> I've been a girl boss since day one, baby. <laughs> I have been a business owner for since I was 17-ish, but I've been specifically running and owning my lash business since I was 19. So So you've been a boss since 19? Yeah. How long have you been a girl? Gosh, a while. At least since 19. <laughs> <laughs> since a while. before 19. Um, and I... And I started my business, you know, like like we talked about in episode two, you know, getting out of a salon. I was kind of frantically um, putting my business together, figuring out all the pieces of legalities and what I needed to run my business. And I was kind of like forcing myself out of the employee mindset and into the ownership mindset. And that happened for me very, very fast because I didn't have years of preparation that went into me starting my own business. I just quit my salon job and then frantically started my own lash business, like started renting somewhere, started taking clients and just was figuring it out as I go truly. Um, And it was interesting to me how that first year of business, um, there was kind of this narrative that surrounded me from colleagues and peers and people I went to school with and uh, friends, adult friends, young friends, everyone, where everyone was like, you're a boss, babe, you're a girl boss, like, yes, you know, kind of thing. And it was almost like my business was never taken seriously. And I hated that. And I felt like it was cringe. And I just didn't like that. So I I, I say it as a joke. Um, it's always if I ever say like, yes, girl boss or like, yes, boss, babe, like it's a joke, but people are serious. And it was always like, how's your little business? How's your little lash business? How's your how's our little girl boss doing? Yes. It always felt a little condescending to me. And I don't. Is anyone else with me on that? How's mommy's favorite girl boss? <laughs> yeah, How's I, little business coming. I never liked it, and You're um, such a boss babe, <laughs> go little boss babe girly. It's so funny, like even when we opened the studios, um, even when we opened the studios, and it's like this is like a company. This is not just like a small business. Like this is like a company with employees, and there is like a. Uh, there's a system for things and there's a coffee shop that serves the public. And there is like, you know, we're working with like hundreds of thousands of dollars doing a build out. Like when you're actually like, there's pedal to the metal, people were still like saying those things to me, you know, like how's your little boss babe lash business kind of thing. And I was just like, when does it end? You know? And I want this episode to be 
um, very, very encouraging to anyone that is in their beauty business because beauty specifically can feel like not a real business to a lot of people in your life, which you know is wrong. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, And so I want this episode to be very, very encouraging and um, legitimizing to you. I want you to take these words to heart. I want you to, you know, from this day forward, like start taking your business very seriously and, um, and I think the girl, the girl boss, the boss babe terminology, like just needs to only be a joke from now on, you know, because that's the only way we use it. That's the only way it should be used because your business, you know, depending on how you run it and how you treat it should be treated legitimately and like any other business. Exactly. And so this episode, I want it to be advice for young women specifically starting a business here are some things that we think you should be doing and should not be doing to be successful and to run your business better number one <laughs> i don't have the list so i don't know <laughs> you look at me like well do you have anything to add um i think okay first of all hot take i think the term girl boss is just a little chuggy at yeah, this point i think chug. even if it's not used like i feel like there's a big uh movement i I feel like there's a lot of people who want to like reclaim girl boss and they're like we're normalizing girl bosses we are normalizing women in business but it's like women have been in business baby women have been in business (laughs) and by saying we've been here (laughs) and i think i feel like also by saying we're normalizing it you're like implying that you are like not as valid in business is because it's like no girls can do business too it's like obviously yeah obviously Obviously. and especially in like the beauty industry because it's like i you know a lot of guys in this industry who have a much harder time than girls because you know for a lot of guys who are in like the lash industry it's a lot harder for them to get clients so i have a lot of respect for um yeah i have a lot of respect for especially the men in the lash industry i can literally only name a handful but it, it has i mean i've spoken to a lot of them and it is a little bit trickier for them specifically yeah shout out to our boy bosses <laughs> Shout out to our boy bosses. It's almost like, you know, in beauty, especially. No, but see, I feel like everyone listening heard me say shout out to our boy bosses and was like, okay, that's a little goofy. That's exactly how girl boss sounds. That's how it sounds. So, yeah, we got a lot of respect for, you know, our, you're all regular bosses. Yeah, you're all bosses. If you own a business, then you, you, you own your business. That's it. You're a boss. Yeah. Basically, stop calling yourself a girl boss. Yeah. Okay. So, um, number one, we want to talk about some things that you should be doing starting today to be successful. Number one is understanding what your clients or customers are really searching for. Wow. Very poignant. Mm-hmm. That's that's important. Yeah. That's important. Do you want me to? I would like you to. Do you want me to jump in on this? You jump in on this boy All boss. All right. I jump in on this king, lash <laughs> king. <laughs> no worries, queen. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, my boss princess. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, so, in biz, in any type of business, especially the lash industry, but it applies for everywhere. It applies for our coffee shop. It applies for the salon suites. It applies for banking. It it applies in any sort of business. You are marketing and you are providing a service or a good to fulfill some deep desire of your customers and the deeper the desire and the more important that desire to your customers the better you're going to do overall and so the best companies the best brands in the world understand this and they understand like you look at we were talking about this earlier today we were talking about like designer goods you look yeah like exactly. how do designer goods sell how you, does like chanel and dior and louis vuitton stay in business 100%. because are they selling purses or are they selling something deeper they're they aren't just selling purses. And and if you look at their marketing, then you can see that they understand that they are not selling. They are they never talk about, oh, our bag is such good quality. Mm-hmm. If you look at any any Louis Vuitton ad in the world, like Louis Vuitton famously they like use good quality materials. They're like a designer brand or like Gucci, like House of Gucci. I watched it. They yeah. had like very fancy cows. Doesn't Elliot look like Adam Driver? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Com- drop a comment down below <laughs> if Elliot looks like Adam Driver. Get you- get this engagement. Literally up. all of my clients watch House of Gucci and they reported back to me and they were like, he looks a little bit like Elliot. And I was like, I oh, know. Mm-hmm. And Adam Driver and is kind of fine, fine girl. <laughs> 
put that on the record. <laughs> okay, but okay, you look at all these brands. They do not talk about, oh, we have the best bag. It will last the longest. It's made with the best materials. None of their marketing material. So what includes are they selling? That. What are they selling? They're selling validation. They're selling status. They're marketing towards helping their customers avoid embarrassment. They're helping their customers become like the people they admire. You look at the most successful campaigns for all these designer brands. The most successful campaigns they've ever had, they take one like icon, one like superstar, and they're like, they just drip them out in their stuff and they associate their brand with like the image of this person that all these people admire. So they're just, they're selling the des towards the desire of people to become beautiful and become validated. And they're not selling a bag or a shirt. They're selling the feeling so how that they're you giving their that? customers. So how can you do it? Like, l let's look at it for lashes. Mm -hmm. What do people, what is the deeper desire that you're fulfilling by giving people lashes? Because if you always look at your business and think, I do lashes, I give my clients pretty lashes, it will be hard for people to perceive your business as being, um, important and legitimate no, and the, the big takeaway is stop selling lashes stop selling lashes sell what are you selling sell the feeling that people get after they get their lashes done and your books will explode explode mm -hmm. it'll it's insane it's mm -hmm. like it's it's a mind hack it's like <laughs> if you stop saying oh i do mega volume better than anyone else in the dallas fort worth area like <laughs> You'll, Which there is someone that's there doing is someone volume. doing that, and if that's you, that's okay. There's time to change, <laughs> um, and you're you're probably you could do well doing that. But you, if you are doing okay, saying I'm selling, I have the best lashes in the Dallas Fort Worth area. You would be doing ten times better if you are saying, "Come see me, and I will make you beautiful." If you instill that thought inside of your customers. Or like, for lashes, a, I think a, a deeper desire in people rather than having their lashes done. And boy, oh boy, is, it, is that a desire. Um, I desire to have my lashes done every day till I die. But um, I, I think a deeper desire of people than just having lashes is like feeling, um, number one, what I've experienced with my clientele is like feeling young feeling yeah. ageless people want to feel young they want to feel um they want to feel effortlessly they beautiful. i was just gonna say that no that was like actually the same, next words are coming out of my mouth same brain baby yeah i was thinking they want to feel effortlessly beautiful getting lash extensions implies like effortlessly waking well, up in the morning yeah if you have lash extensions then you wake up and you're already pretty like that's that's what they felt like when they were 20 years old mm -hmm. a lot of like if you if your clientele is a lot of women in their 40s mm -hmm. like if you can make when they think about seeing you for lashes if you make them feel like they felt when they were 20 and their skin was perfect and mm -hmm. like everything was good like they'll they'll see you forever they'll never and, leave. and obviously this is very surface level this isn't very deep but like when i was in high school people started getting lash extensions yeah. and they were the cool pretty preppy popular girls and i remember like just thinking they were so effortlessly beautiful like they were always like i don't wear any makeup hee hee like these are my real lashes <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> and so and even for me as like a 16 year old girl i would look at the girls at school that had like hair extensions and lash extensions and like i was just like oh my gosh they're so like effortlessly beautiful yeah and I want to be that like it t takes a lot of effort to look like that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but that's as, as a young girl, like that's on a very surface level, like what I was being sold. Yeah. You know, I mean, another example, I just purchased a Traeger grill. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. But did you really purchase a Traeger grill? No. Or did you? I bought, I purchased the Traeger lifestyle. Honestly. <laughs> no, no, this is, it's, it's, it's goofy. I know it is goofy. However. But like, this is just how consumerism works. No, this like, is how, this is the reason everybody buys. People either buy to fulfill a desire or to fulfill a need. And you do not want to be selling people to fulfill needs. And nobody needs lashes. Nobody needs lashes. Nobody needs but lashes. But that's okay because 90% of what people buy does not f f fulfill their needs. If some all someone needs to fulfill their needs is some rice and some <laughs> water and like a roof over their head. 
And no one wants to be selling that. But 95% of the economy runs on things people desire. It's so much better to be in that business because then you can charge so much more. No mm -hmm. one's going to be paying $10 a pound or $10 a bowl for rice, but they'll pay $1,000 for a plate of super fancy sushi. They don't need mm -hmm. the fancy sushi. They just want it. But anyway, Period, girl back, boss. back to my Traeger lifestyle. <laughs> Okay, you don't have to flex your grill for I, all the people. I have a Traeger. <laughs> um, no, but, like, the reason, like, I, I, I've I, been thinking about this a lot because I'm like, okay, trying to be introspective. Why did I want a Traeger so badly? I don't know because you could have bought any grill. No, because I could have bought any grill. And most grills. But, no, I know why. Most grills I know are cheaper. Why? Because our bestest of friends are in their 40s. Yep. And they will think you're cool. Well, okay. That. Because they're grill, because they're grill daddies, and you want to be a grill daddy. I want to, I want to be a grill daddy. And and if you look at the people who own Traegers, they're all obsessed with them. Because when you get a Traeger, you are part of an exclusive club okay. of Traeger <laughs> owners. <laughs> okay. And you all smoke meats wonderfully. <laughs> okay. Well, similar to lashes. Exactly. You're, you're kind of selling that exclusivity of you like are. my lashes look better than everyone in my friend groups. Hundred percent. You know whatever. So whatever it is, I would figure out. What is the deeper thing that you are selling to your customers or clients that is beyond a beauty service? And then you can market to those people way more effectively because if you can communicate the product, then you can better. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. That's, that is a Hold on. No, no, no. But like if you can. Stop. If you can communicate the product. You can sell the product. <laughs> Look at Kodak. <laughs> stop. Lady I Gaga is their head <laughs> of marketing. Now, I love some of Gaga's songs. What the heck does she know about cameras? Okay, that's an old, old <laughs> Kanye quote. Um, I did it's it. true, though. But it's true. If you can, um, yeah, if, if you can effectively communicate the product that you're selling, pe more people will buy it. And I think just communicating to people, you know, over and over again, this is my work, this is my work, this is my work, this is my work. Um, people are going to keep scrolling unless you can, you know, effectively communicate a deeper meaning of why they should want your oh, yeah. work on oh, their yeah. face. Absolutely. Love it. I think, I think the people get it. The people I think get they it. get it. Number They're two, smart. um, I wanted to talk about taking your business seriously. Ooh. And Cause is, if you don't, who will? Yeah. If you don't, who will? And this is a good one because like, especially just in the space I'm in with like lash service providers, like lash, edu lash educators, lash service providers. Um, a lot of them, like have a hard time understanding how to take their business seriously like they do but they have a hard time getting other people to take their business seriously mm -hmm. and if you truly take your business seriously and you walk that walk talk that talk other people naturally follow like even in the beginning when people were kind of like oh you're my lash girl you're my lash babe like you're my girl boss you know whatever maddie owns like maddie has maddie this little lash, lash lady or especially oh grinds my gears like maddie's side hustle or something oh. girl this was never maddie's side hustle baby um this it, was her front hustle yeah it <laughs> yeah it kind of took like you know probably about four or five years to build enough credibility where everyone in my life started to like and first like, of all like oh, my she's yeah serious and like this. oh my gosh no like my friends and family always took what i do seriously but i mean like people that are just like outside looking in you know, to like be your parents' friends <laughs> and like your your friends' cousins. Yeah, yeah. Like in the beginning, like obviously those people are like, oh yes, like lashes queen. But um, oh. yeah, no, my friends and family always took what I do very seriously. Um, but what are some ways that you Shout think? Out. What are some ways that you think? Um, people listening to this can start taking their business more seriously starting today. Well, I think just treating it. Oh, I, I. Oh, well, that's kind of that's kind of point three. I think. But um, I think they kind of go hand in hand. So like yeah. point three of our uh, five steps to become a girl boss, boss, babe, queen is um, to what was it? Oh, to make your business its own entity. Yeah. To make yeah, to yeah, treat yeah. your business they as its own entity. Hand. And so like if you are taking business seriously and you're saying this is what I'm going to do, then your business is its own thing. Your business is not is greater than just you. And um, this was something that took me a really long time to start doing because inherently to me, when we were working and starting to grow the business and we're doing things like the build out and we're doing things like uh, getting renters and and serving 
hundreds more people, thousands more people than we like have before, I struggled with making decisions for the business that were like in the business's best interest because it felt selfish for me to do things that were in the business's best interest because the business was primarily just us two. So if I was doing something that was best for the business, then it it was best for like the two of us. So like say we're doing the build out and I the I know the best thing I could do for the business is to negotiate really hard with our subcontractors or our general contractor and say, no, this is not acceptable. Like it has to be like this. But a lot of times, and I think we've we've both gotten a lot better at this, but when we were doing like the build out, there were a lot of times where I would like step back and I'd be like, well, you know, like I'm the only one affected by this. Like it's it's not a big deal. Like I'll just let it slide. Like I don't want to uh, I don't want to push for this extra, um, thing that I know we should get just because like, it's not a big deal. I'm still fine. Like we're still eating. Like it's, it's not a big deal, but inherently, like if you want your business to grow and become greater than you, you, you have to treat it like it's going to be better than you be bigger than you are. And if you want it to grow into something that's like bigger than just you doing lashes or just like you, uh, making some products on the weekends, like you have to treat it as if it is already there or else it'll never be able to get there. So you just have to like, there's, th there's this guy, Michael Masterson, who wrote a book called Ready Fire Aim, which I really like. And he is a business consultant. And one of the things that he says is that the defaults that businesses either have to grow or they'll die. And like taking that mindset that like if I'm not growing the business, I'm doing a disservice to this to the business. And like I'm like your business is never just like staying stagnant. It's either no. growing or it's like and so like actively not growing. You have to do everything you can. Like business isn't easy. And like if you're like letting things slide because you're like, ah, like I'm fine, then you're like there's a hundred other businesses out there that are not gonna let things slide and you're just gonna get like run over by them. And so, like, you have to push hard to, like, get your business to to actually succeed. And that doesn't mean, like, you're, you're enemies with your customers. Like, you have to treat your customers like the best people in the world. And, like, you have to be super kind to everyone you come in contact with. And you have to, like, be a really good person throughout it. And that'll that's the best way to succeed. But, like, you can't be a pushover in it. Yeah. You know? I don't know. What are your thoughts? Sorry, I was doing girl boss things on my phone oh, while you sorry. answered that question. <laughs> um, yeah, I think to piggyback on that, um, I think normalizing only taking business opportunities that are very beneficial and very good. Ooh, smooth segue. And that kind of just like rides the coattails of like, yeah, treating your business as its own entity is True. also just taking only taking business deals and only taking on opportunities that are extremely are, beneficial to your business not just you or your status or anything like that yeah. and i have totally um done this in the You've past seen this. yeah for the last four years like when i was starting my last business i was saying yes to every opportunity that was presented mm -hmm. to me like mm -hmm. any role that i got any partnership or like i would just say yes to anything because i was like oh this could like um put me in front of more eyes or this could like grow my audience or this could whatever but at the end of the day you actually have to sit back and evaluate like how is this benefiting my business not just that's maddie that's true that's like true. is this good for the culture of lightheart is this good for the customers of lightheart mm -hmm. is this good for you growing the brand identity the business whatever it is you have to put that aside and think about that yeah and it's not just is it good mm -hmm. but is it good enough for you to spend your time and effort on because it's I, I heard a really good quote and it was it may be a great opportunity, but it's not my great opportunity. Yeah. And it's like you That's for can, someone. That's I thought it was for me. No, like <laughs> no. Oh like, the, no, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant the quote. I thought no, you no, were no, like, no, no. Well that quote's for someone. No, that's like not... <laughs> like sometimes you just have to say, That's not my ministry. <laughs> it's not my ministry. It's not my ministry. And babe. it's like and and that is something that is like something you have to learn is that as your business grows you will get more and more opportunities like mm -hmm. that's just that's just a fact of the world like the rich get richer baby yeah and like as you do well in your business and as your business grows people you take will more see clients, that, yes people will see that and they'll give you more opportunities and a lot of them you'll have to say no to if you want to keep focusing on the things that are actually like driving your business mm -hmm. forward and driving your life forward and it's 
really difficult at the beginning because you have to like change what your expectations are at the beginning. It's like, okay, you get one client. That's great. You get two clients. Awesome. You're, you like finally fill your books. That's amazing. And then once you fill your books, this is something a lot of lash artists struggle with is like, once you fill your books, then you have, you're working 40 hours a week. And then you have more people asking you, Oh, can you take me on? And you're like, you're still in that mindset of like, oh, I need every client I can get. Yeah. And so then so many lash artists will like keep taking clients and then they're working seven days a week. And that, that was you. Mm -hmm. You were working like 10 hours a day, 11 yes hours a day. Because I said yes to everything. Because you said yes to everything. But at some point you have to understand like, okay, I need to raise my standards for what I'm going to accept. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's all cap my clientele here and now i'm gonna raise my prices maybe some of them will drop off but then i'll fill it back up because now i because you you also kind of have to have like a mindset of like it's kind of cringe but like a mindset of abundance yeah. where it's like i can fill this back up and like in the beginning you gotta you gotta be like you gotta hustle you gotta be scrappy <laughs> and you gotta like do anything you can to get clients you know but like it comes to a point where it's like okay you know but the you hustle can get isn't forever the hustle isn't forever the hustle has a place and a time. A place and a time. It's okay to hustle sometimes, but it sometimes... Is. We still hustle sometimes. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes baby. we don't. I will say, this is advice that I have recently been taking myself that has exponentially grown my business because I have said no to three huge things this year, and it's only the ninth. Yeah. It's Whoa. only the ninth. That's and one I thing every three days. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no. I went to college. <laughs> I do math. <laughs> yeah. Um, the number one thing is I have said no to every booking request this year. Every single new client request. I said, start of the year, I'm not going to take any new clients. I'm only going to service the exclusive clientele that I have because I know that if I take more clients, that is hours that are taken away from me creating digital products or working on the educational side of our business that can't grow. And currently, yeah. like the clientele I have, that is like in my capacity to service them fully yep. and like spend quality time with them, get their lashes perfect every time, have great time with them. And then I can focus on all the other parts of my business that need my full attention. But I have gotten three to four requests in my DMs a day. Oh, yeah. Saying, Easy. saying I'm trying to book on your website. Can I book an appointment? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and like to constantly turn those people to somebody else. Like in the beginning, I was like, oh, because like I could have taken that client. You but technically could have fit them in. Technically. That is true. There are enough hours in the day. But mentally thinking, okay, worth it. Maddie wants to say yes and make this person happy and be like, yes, girl, like coming on Tuesday night, whatever. But but then I think of Lightheart and all the thousands of lash artists around the world that are, you know, experiencing um, their businesses grow due yeah. to like our going independent course oh, yeah. and our eBooks and our manuals, like things that take my time to produce. Yeah. I think about, okay, what is in the best interest of the business? Oh, yeah. Well, and, and I think it also helps to, like, if you think about the good that your business is doing, mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier to make those decisions. Because if you think about it in the context that, okay, if I take one more client, I'll make, like, her day. I will make her feel beautiful every week. I will improve her life some percentage mm -hmm. some amount mm -hmm. and i'm talking to like the lash educators right yeah, now yeah but if i make a new digital manual or i make a new course then i could in a very real way improve the lives of thousands of lash artists yeah and you have to over, consider yeah, yeah the overall good that you're doing by focusing your efforts on the things that are are the most impactful mm -hmm. even though it's really hard to say no to the other opportunities is so important because it's like overall you're going to be able to do so much more good in the world by helping more lash artists succeed and helping more lash artists make more money and like improve their businesses and mm -hmm. eliminate the stress that comes with like not knowing what to do every day if they like like you've gotten so many messages just this week from like going independent of all these girls who are like wow i like know i feel like i can quit my job now like yeah. i know what to do to start my business and like, that is just a greater good it is, it is it's it objectively you did more good by spending time on going independent than you would have on by taking four more clients yeah. you know also another thing this is the last thing um 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. My gosh. I've said no to travel trainings. I've said no to lots yeah. of things this year. But n- one of the number one things that surprised me was I turned down a speaking role last week. Yeah. Like I was offered to be a speaker at a big lash event. And oh, my gosh, I was jumping up and down. Like my first reaction was like, oh, my gosh, like this is amazing. Because yeah, gonna... it's like I've always wanted I've to do always this. I've always wanted to do this. I want to fly there. I want to do this. I got to play my outfits. I got to play what I want to talk about. I got to like y- y- whatever, whatever. <laughs> but then and that was Maddie being like, this is such a great opportunity, which it was True. for somebody. And that is a great opportunity for somebody that's mm-hmm. an educator, right? Like that's to true. be on stage oh my gosh, huge. talking to, you know, huge. thousands of people or whatever. And and to be clear, you probably, you are going to do that. Oh, I would love to be a speaker Absolutely. at an event. But then I thought about the timing and I thought, okay, that week. You have a group training. I, I have a group training that I would come home tired from. It, yeah, it's it, like the day after the conference. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I need to, um, like I it, it matters more to the well-being of the business. Yep. You know, yep. not Maddie. It matters more to the well-being of the business that I show up to that class prepared, set up, mm-hmm. you know, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, yep. you know, th- for those eight people that flew in to get trained by me. And and that is what was in in, in my mind that was that is what was in the best interest of Lightheart that week. And that's really interesting too because you speaking at a speaking engagement is an objective good thing for the business yes because it is a great oh but i was thinking about what is the objective that would be the good thing for the business and the thing is is that would give me exposure okay well i'm exposed girl and it would maybe get us more students we're fully we how we can't fit more we can't fit more students it Uh, would you know there's there's nothing it would bring me at that point that would uh, the more important thing is giving the students that you already have the absolute best experience possible absolutely so it's like you have to figure out okay which like that was a great opportunity i was so grateful i literally like almost peed my pants and if it was like a week later sure (laughs) if it was a week later i probably would have taken it but you always but it's just about putting your um what's word like your ego aside and wanting to take every opportunity and focusing on the ones that will actually advance your business Mm-hmm. the very very most and i will just say i'm very very grateful for that opportunity and i appreciate it and i will take you up on yes. that next year girl yeah um, absolutely <laughs> yeah this isn't like don't do speaking engagements it's like no that's sick girl i can't to. wait to do my first speaking absolutely. engagement. i hope it's it just, is this year it's just the timing just didn't work yeah which and is it's okay yeah and if timing doesn't work okay. it's okay to say no but Perfect. one day i'll be speaking about something i don't know what but i will yep. um next final thing Ooh, and this one's kind of juicy oh. um <laughs> Get those pitchforks ready, girlies. My, pi- my final point is just talking about things that, as a young woman in business, it can be seem very attractive to put a label on yourself that maybe you don't actually fulfill yet. And I'm talking mm. about I don't think anyone should be calling themselves CEOs unless they actually fulfill the role of a CEO in that company. I'm just saying – interesting i'm just saying because a lot of lash artists like it's in their bio they're like ceo and they mean it yeah. they a hundred percent mean it they think that they are the ceo of their business yep. and they don't even know what a ceo is yeah i think step and, one and that's why a lot of people don't take their business seriously that no hundred percent that is actually because when i very, see a lash artist put in their bio like ceo of I'd be like, like okay ceo of um you know bad gal mama one two three lashes trying, trying to come up with the name that doesn't exist so we don't call anyone <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um because i was gonna say baddie lashes but i have a friend that owns baddie lashes and so it's like, like and we love that but like but like you whatever your your lash business is if you're just a service provider which like is awesome but if you're a service provider and you have ceo in your bio i think that's one of the reasons why people might not be taking your business seriously because Absolutely. they might understand the structure of what a CEO means. Yeah, and they're like, okay, she clearly doesn't take this seriously. Yeah. It's like step one to being a CEO is read the job description for a CEO. So talk about that. Um, well, so I think a good rule of thumb is do not call yourself a CEO unless you have employees. Yeah. Once you have employees. Because what, what, is, what is a CEO? Man, explain it to us. What What is a CEO? Yeah. CEO stands for chief executive officer. And a chief executive officer is in charge of planning the strategic vision and the goals and the uh, the long-term outlook for a business. Mm-hmm. And the reason the role exists and the reason that you have uh, that's like the kind of highest role in a company yeah. is because the CEO in a company is the person who is most able to affect the long-term future of the company. So you look at like 
the most famous CEOs in history, like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs' role was to provide a future vision for Apple. Can I just tell you something really fast? Yep. Can you hold that thought? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, my entire life, I thought that Steve Jobs was Stephen Hawking. <laughs> You're like, boy, how does he make all those phones when he's just in that wheelchair? No, I'm dead serious. <laughs> like, I remember being in, like, high school. Like, I was dead ass, like, 18. And somebody was, like, talking about Steve Jobs and, like, stuff about, uh, what, like, iPhones? Yeah. He did iPhones, right? Yeah, he, it, he did well, I get iPhone. confused because I thought it was Stephen Hawking. And, and, someone, <laughs> and someone was, like, doing, like, a presentation on Steve Jobs. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, and isn't it so much more impressive that he did all that from a wheelchair and, like, from his little screen? <laughs> and and I, people are like, what are you talking I don't think I've ever about? told you that. And I just remember That's everyone so was like, girl, what, what are you talking? Like, this is Steve Jobs. And I was like, I don't know who, who is that, that is. Who is that guy in the turtleneck? <laughs> I'm talking about the, the guy with the funny voice. Yes yes stephen hawking is a physicist okay he's a he's a a, a nuclear physicist cool i thought he was Steve or a Jobs. theoretical physicist cool yeah. he, uh, <laughs> so that was just a side note a ceo is a very specific job it's a specific role it's a specific job and it is also the other thing about it is for most lash artists who are working in their business, a more accurate role, and this is another reason that people don't take it seriously when you say mm -hmm. it, a more accurate role would be like chief product officer. Say you want to be like a C-suite, which is like chief suite that's like the highest level of yeah. the company. Say you want to be a C-suite employee. I know it doesn't sound company. as cool. I know it doesn't sound as cool, um, but it is more accurate, which I think is Because cooler. a chief product officer is in charge of creating and improving the product, which yeah. if you're a lash artist, your product is your lashes. That's what you're doing. Yeah. You're also the like lash artist in the company, but yeah. you are in charge of improving the product. So you're a chief products officer. Right. Or the person who's in charge of running the company's day-to-day -day operations is the chief operations officer, the CEO. CEO yeah. That would also be more accurate. Mm -hmm. CEO is like a very specific thing that like if you fulfill that in your company, then great. Like feel, feel free to... Uh, call yourself a CEO. And a CEO can also have other jobs in the company, especially in smaller companies. Mm -hmm. It's like you can be a CEO and the chief product officer. But generally, it's it's just, I think a lot of people call themselves CEO because they're like, that's the top level of a company. But it's like, no, that's like a role in a company. Mm -hmm. And like you look at- we, We've just been told through media that like- That CEO, CEO is like in charge. But it's like a lot of founders of companies aren't the CEOs of their yeah. companies. Like I call myself the founder of Lightheart. Yeah. No, because like, because you are the founder. Homegirl started it, and and if you look at like real like at like uh, like startups and like the um like big kind of business ecosystem, like people will call people who are founders of companies and who also run the companies and like are the CEO of the company, they'll be like, this is the founder and CEO because a CEO is a role that you give an employee. Yeah. And so you can be a founder and you can employ yourself at your company as a CEO. But it's like, if you're just saying that, cause you think it sounds cool. Like it's, it's a little goofy. It's yeah. a little goofy. Yeah. And that's okay. And, and I also wanted to touch on, you know, if you are a young woman in business, it can be seem very attractive to trust people that um are Ooh, like guru one. yeah I, but i'm just saying like as a young woman business owner it can seem very attractive um and very enticing to trust people that call themselves uh like gurus or coaches or ceos like ceo boss babe mentoring whatever but like be are they even the ceo of that company do they know what a ceo is if they're calling themselves a ceo probably not probably not probably not and I think a really good rule of thumb, this is honestly, I think probably the most important advice in yeah. the whole episode because I think it could save people lots of money. Yeah. And this episode really is just to like save, save, you. save you money, save you stress, mm -hmm. help you to build your business in an effective and help and you to like your business yeah, more. Yeah. You got to like it. I you think the most time. important thing, especially with like beauty business or lash business where like it, it's, it's a lot of work um, is like staying in love with what you do oh and gosh. staying in love with your business. That's like that so really important. is the whole point. Of this that episode. honestly should be your number one priority. If you're a lash artist is not getting burnt out. I always tell my students that I say Aww. the number one thing that I care about more than anything, be. more than you, the number one thing you should care about in like not your being prices. a lash artist. It's not your prices. It's not your clientele. It's not anything. It is staying in love with what you do because if you're in love with what you do, it'll take you places. But if you lose that love of what you do, it is very, very hard yep. to come back from that. 
you'll make a lot more taking 20 clients a week for 10 years than you would taking 30 clients a week for five years. Yeah. Okay. So what are you um, saying? So the, a really good rule of thumb for when you are, when you face or when you come across mentors, coaches, beauty bosses of all sorts and kinds. And there's fantastic ones. There are really good ones. That's the thing. We are not anti-mentorship. We're not no. anti-coach. We do like, it. There We're are... mentors. Are we? I, I mean, kind of. Kind of. A little bit. Yeah. I'm um, just saying there are fantastic like mentors. But I think a really good rule of thumb for deciding whether or not you should give them your money is have they done the thing that you want to do? And have they done the thing that they are teaching you to do? Mm -hmm. And if you say, I want to get fully booked, then you should find a – if and you want to, like, find a mentor or a coach to help you do that. You should, at the minimum, find someone who has gotten fully booked and helped other people get fully booked. And if they haven't done that, I wouldn't even consider them. Yeah. And if you say, I want to open salon suites – you should and you like want to hire a mentor to help you get there, which I think could be really good. Like if we had had a coach or a mentor who was like oh, helping us open the salon, we would have saved so much money. What I would have given. Absolutely. We saved. If we paid freaking ten, twenty thousand dollars. I would have paid like 50K to someone. Oh, absolutely. Because we would have we would have saved easily 100K. Yeah easily yeah um and it so it, it it can totally be worth it but you have to make sure you find someone but the only way we could have saved that amount of money by hiring a coach or a mentor is if they had already gone through the thing we're going through and they can help us avoid all the pitfalls mm -hmm. that come along with it if it's just someone who's like oh yeah i know everything there is to know about it well have you like opened one yourself it's like no but i have studied this for yeah. hours i would it's just like, say i would just say especially in the money. beauty world today be very wary of educators, coaches, CEOs, anything, yep. unless there is so much proof yeah. to back up, I'm, you know. Yeah. Make sure, like, you don't need to be the guinea pig for their training. No. Like, even if it's someone who, like, they're teaching you lashes or something, it's okay to wait and not be the first one to take their training. Like, yeah. you, you, it's a really good way to find out if it's good is to ask people who've already taken it mm -hmm. or do they have good testimonials? Like have people who've taken their training said really good things. If they have, then it's probably pretty good. Yeah. That's it. I just do your research, figure it out. Don't, don't give people money who um, just say, Oh, I will give you this result because one thing that they can do, one thing that a lot of people do, and this isn't, I'm not talking about anyone in particular here. Um, one thing that a lot of like coaches will do is they'll like sell you the dream outcome and they'll be like, by hiring me, you will get exactly what you want. You will get a vacation in Cabo every two months for the rest of your life. And it's like, oh, I want that so bad. And it, that's all you'll think about. And it can cloud your judgment to the point where you don't think, okay, well, wait, sh I should probably check and make sure that they actually can get me there instead of just focusing on like my amazing vacation in Cabo that I'm going to do. Like just, just think, okay, have they done this? Have other people had success with them? If both those things are true, it's probably pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. That's all I got. Thanks, girl bosses. <laughs> anyway, I hope this is more of a business focus episode, but I um, hope this episode was encouraging for you. And boy, oh boy, do I love like as someone that got started in the beauty business being very um, young and somewhat naive and took every opportunity presented to me. I love seeing this generation this like up and coming uh like mid 2020s generation of young beauty business owners like take charge of their business i love to see it i absolutely love to see it i i made a business course a year ago called going independent and um with elliot elliot filmed and produced it and he stars in it <laughs> but um oh my gosh was that a labor of love and it was something it was. that we filmed in our first apartment together and it was really all about how to set up your beauty business from the ground up with, with no stress. And this week we did a sale on it. It the sale ended, but we, we ran a huge sale on it because oh my gosh. we wanted everyone to get it. And, um, it exploded. It exploded. It exploded. I had no idea that so many people were going to get it. Yeah. That blew my mind. Because for the last year, we've had it on sale for like 600 bucks. It was valued at, we, we sold, we sold a lot of them, but we, I was like, you know what? Let's put them on sale for like just 
insane. Almost I was like, free. Madison, are you sure? We gave them away for ni- 99 bucks. And, and, and it's a it's a business course. It's a five-hour business like, course. It's big. It's, it's big. It's, it's chunky. Yes. And people were actually surprised how big it was. No. I th- Well, the, the honestly, the biggest thing that I was worried about with selling it at $99 mm-hmm. is that people were going to think like, okay, this this thing is going to be a joke. No. I thought it would like, be good to price no it that low good. for the week because then I was like, you know what? People could get so much value out of all of our other more advanced programs that we put out later on. So smart. It, and, and I want desperately, I just want everyone to take it. Like, yeah. I want everyone that I know to take it and to implement these things and to run their businesses effectively from the very, very beginning. It's what so important. Um, but it really was encouraging to me this week to see how many people got it. And everyone, basically everyone who got it messaged me yeah. and was like, you know, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm taking this all all day all night like i love this course it's teaching me so much i never knew like business owners that already have been in business for multiple years were like i took so much value out of this chapter and like i took so much value out of i never knew this and like i'm gonna start implementing this and so i'm so encouraged by especially the lash community taking their businesses so seriously they're stepping up their game people I, i think like this year specifically, um, and I don't know if it's just like coming out of COVID or whatever it is, but like a lot of the lash artists that I know are taking their businesses so seriously. They're getting mentors. They're taking good education. Yep. They're going to beauty school. They're like really, you know, putting steps into place to make sure their beauty business is the best that it can be. And I love to see it. Oh, yeah. Like as someone that's a trainer, I have trained people that don't care. And it hurts my heart because I'm like, I just wish you cared, you know, because I can give you everything, you but would you do don't so care. Good if you and cared. to see the amount of people that took that course and that care so mm. much about encouraging. about the success and the setup of their business um, really makes me happy. So if you're listening to this, you're on the right track. And if you took Going Independent, we love you so much. Love and you so I much. I hope your business is the greatest thing hope in the it entire thrives. world. It thrives. It is going to thrive. I mean, I you took Going you Independent. A, how could it not thrive? I want to give you a big old kiss. All yeah. That was that was beautiful. Um that are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Thank you for tuning in to Episode 10. Episode 10. Double digits. <laughs> Woo! Double digits. We will see you next Here's time. Here's to 10 more. <laughs> and no more. <laughs> Peace out, baby. <laughs> Smooches. Smooches. Bye. <laughs>